You've scored a 300 or a little more than that in your GRE? You're not sure what are the good universities to go for? Naturally, you'll go to our Facebook group, post your profile and ask for suggestions. You will get a bunch of inconclusive comments. Then, you may download an app or use free tools and you do the same again. But, you'll get a list that may not have your target universities. If not all of this, you go to your seniors and ask their advice and they add on their own opinions. So whose advice do you take? How do you decide? Let's find out. Hi, this is Anjali from GREH and today we are going to find out if a GRE score of 300 is really enough, can you get a top MS admit with it? And how to draft an application that universities just can't reject. And for those who stay till the end, you will get tips on how to shortlist universities and drafting a game-changing SOP. With countless websites, not so credible consultancies, and each senior with different opinions, it's natural if you are confused. So let's cut through the clutter and answer these questions in the most legit way with data. Data At GRE Edge, we track a lot of data and with over 6000 plus admits spanning across the globe, 591 unique specializations and over 15 million dollars of funding for our students, we analyze and learn the reasons behind each and every admit as well as the rejects. How does this help? Well, let's imagine you have a topic. You can always look up online, search in Google and get some generic solutions. But is that enough? Ideally, you should visit a dentist with experience and an understanding of what your body needs. Similarly, every profile is unique in nature and thereby shortlisting universities, drafting SOP and LORs should be based on data as well. So, to answer the question, is a 300 GRE score enough for an admit? We took the admit data of our fall 19 students and looked at what GRE scores they had. Let's take a look. Although our success rate of getting at least one admit was a whopping 88% throughout every GRE score range, the core of our admits actually came from the 301 to 315 GRE scorers. Can you guess what the number is? It's massive 55%. So a 300 GRE score will get you an admit, but I'm sure that's not what you want to settle for. The question you had, is a 300 GRE score enough for an admit? Must now have become, is a 300 GRE score enough for a top admit? To answer this question, let's look at the data again, but a little closer. Where did this 55% of 300 to 315 scorers get admits from? Looking at the ranking distribution of these admits, this is what we found. Again, a massive 55% of the students got admits in the top 100 universities. Just to pick a few students from our wall of excellence who got into these top universities, we have Aditi Simha J with GRE score of 302 managed to bag admits from two prestigious universities, 6th ranked Purdue University and 10th ranked Carnegie Mellon University. Then we have Ramya KG with GRE of 302 and TOEFL of 90. She got 7 admits including both Arizona State University and UT Dallas along with scholarships from IIT Chicago and Sunny Binghamton. And we can go on and on about the list. But I'm pretty sure the question in your mind is a 300 GRE score enough for a top admit must now have become how can I get a top admit? Well, the answer is the data driven A strategy. What is A's? A for analysis, C for comparison and E for execution. Once you complete your GRE, the challenge you'll face is shortlisting from the 1700 plus institutes in the US. In the analysis part, start with looking within. Introspect and write down these aspects of your profile. Motivation for MS, GRE score, GPA, relevant work experience, research publications, internships, co-curriculars, 
target course and specializations, planned budget and location preference. Jotting this down would help you arrive at an understanding of what your profile is. Now, we'll go to step number two, which is look outside. This is where things get interesting. Talk to at least 10 to 15 seniors who are currently pursuing their MS or have finished their masters. Collect similar information from step one with few more questions on where they had applied for MS, what admits they had got, what rejects they had got. Ideally, keeping track of the details using a sheet where you list down each senior's profile along with their admits and rejects is recommended. To make it easier, here is a template that you can use. Now, what if you don't have seniors? In that case, there are certain websites like usnews.com and topuniversities.com where you can get information like GRE score requirements, ranking, budget, etc. Also, another alternative which we recommend only as a last resort is to go to Facebook, WhatsApp or even Instagram and search for groups by students where discussions on universities are always active. You can connect with the members who applied for previous intake and get their profiles as well. Apart from this, there are also free tools which do provide university lists based on different profiles. Use them only as an input because first, they may not be credible and second, it is not personalized. The most authentic information can be acquired from official university websites, emailing admission committees, professors and alumni of each university. Now that the sheet is complete, the comparison phase starts. Benchmark your profile against each admit and reject. This will give you an approximate idea of which universities will be ambitious, moderate and safe. At GRH, we do the same but with detailed analysis of our 6,000 plus admits. Let's take an actual student from our wall of excellence, Apoor Singh Gautam. His GRE score was 304, TOEFL score was 102 and had CGPA 8.8. .8. He was interested in MS in cybersecurity and had a budget of 20 to 25 lakhs per year. He was very concerned because of his GRE score but was very determined to go to top 50 universities. So we compared and benchmarked his profile against our fall 2018 and 2017 cybersecurity admits. We found out that average GRE score for fall 2018 and 2017 was 308 and 307 respectively, while the average GPA was 7.3 and 7.7. .7. This helped us understand that admission committees for cybersecurity programs did not pertain only to GRE scores. Also, keeping in mind all the other aspects of his profile, such as hackathons, internships, electives, motivation, and long term career goals, with respect to competition and past admits, we had suggested this list to him. He applied to these universities and he got an admit from Georgia Tech which is ranked 9th for cybersecurity and a few other admits. And guess what? He also got a scholarship of $12,000 from the Chester Institute of Technology. GREH Pro Tip Just in case you didn't know, if anybody guarantees 100% chance of admits, Run. The reason? No top university has a fixed criteria of selection and is subjective to number of applications they attract each year. Claiming 100% chance of getting admit for your profile would mean you are being sent to tie up and unranked universities. Now comes the third part of ACE, execution. With the best possible university list in hand, now it's about setting the right timeline, drafting a persuasive SOP, getting credible LORs, and filling the online applications in a way the university just can't reject you. Now keep in mind, especially for 300 to 310 scorers, where there may be gaps in your profile, SOP can be a game changer that can get you top admits. While you may have heard how SOP should be a reflection of your passion, talk about your motivation, highlight your aspirations, talk about your projects, skills, and of course, be persuasive. Well. 
Everybody does that. But the game changer is to identify a theme for your SOP that makes them realize you will be an ideal fit. Now you may be someone who is a problem solver or interested in research or interested in helping the society or an entrepreneur. When the admission committee reads your SOP, they want to know who you are as a person, what skills you have acquired, what choices have led you to pursue a master's in this field and why this particular university. Keeping the theme consistent while addressing all these questions would be the key to drafting an SOP that will top admits. Now, how we identify this theme for our students is using the questionnaire that you can access in our admission tracker. Just to give you an example, let's take an SOP of a GREH student that won an admit in the civil department from Purdue University. Keeping the theme as person looking for sustainable development, here are a few snippets. While the objective to go for MS in civil is established, the student emphasizes on environment-friendly sustainable projects. Even as we discuss the motivation for MS, the student connects it back to sustainability. Similarly, the student connects with the university and subject keeping the theme consistent. Now all that's left in execution is to collect LORs, transcripts and complete the online application on time. There you have the A strategy that ensures you make your application process in a way university just can't reject. So remember, while scoring a 320 plus is important, a 300 GRE score is not the end of the road. If you want to know how to incorporate the A strategy in your MS admissions, speak to our admission experts today by clicking on the link below and find out how you can reach your dream university. Hope this video helped you and all the best for your admissions. This is Anjali signing off. Happy learning!